Even amongst the followers of the ruinous powers, the scions of the flame are zealots. These warriors worship the darkest fires of Akshi, bringing their blazing wrath to bear on all they deem their enemies. What's up everybody? I am Xerxes, you're in my workshop and today we are painting Scions of the Flame, a fire-wielding warband from Age of Sigma Warcry. The box art for these guys is pretty cool, but I wanted to do something different and I looked for the inspiration in the world of Warhammer 40k. And I found it in none other than the flamey boys of the Loyalist forces, the Salamanders. I'll be using paints from both Vallejo and Scale 75 ranges. The full list is available in the description below the video. In terms of the techniques, I'll be focusing on glazing, dry brushing and of course oil washes. I'll also be using both airbrush and paintbrushes, but majority of the work will be done with paintbrushes. At the beginning, I wasn't completely sure how to prime the models, but eventually I went for black primer with the zenithal highlight of white. Even if I end up covering most of the highlights, as usual, they should still help me with painting some parts of the models. I think skin is probably the biggest challenge of this project. I looked at cover art for the Salamander's Codex to get some ideas for colors to use. Their skin is mostly black and grey with a few unusual highlights. Judging by the artwork, this was the color that I should use. And since I refuse to use GW paints on anything that even remotely resembles a mini, I opted for Azure from Vallejo model color range. It's a lot lighter, colder and more bluish, I decided to aim for that cold ash looking skin. It might create an interesting contrast with the flames, or end up being a total disaster. We'll see. I used an airbrush to spray a mix of one part graphene grey and one part Vallejo Azure to the skin. I followed that up with a highlight of pure Azure applied with an airbrush and then more deliberate and accurate highlight of the same paint applied with the brush. Unfortunately, the skin was looking too light and too bluish at this point. I wasn't convinced that the black wash was going to fix the issue, so I did the following things. I mixed azure with white in equal parts, added some glaze medium, then I painted the most raised areas of the skin. I accentuated both muscle shapes as well as facial features. After that, it was time to use the airbrush again. I mixed mud black and graphene grey in equal proportions, added some glaze medium and I sprayed a thin layer of paint to blend all the colors together as well as darken the skin which got the color of graphite. All tabards and tunics in the original theme are red. Following the color scheme of salamanders I decided to make this element green. I created a thin glaze of boreal green and applied it with a fairly large size 4 brush. I want to make use of that zenith highlight as much as possible. I wanted to add warmer colors to the fabric, so I cracked open Vallejo inks. I used yellow ink to paint the highlights on the fabric. A mix of green and black inks to add more color to the shadows. After the inks had dried, I created a glaze of one part boreal green and yellow and I painted it over the whole fabric. Like with the skin, I wanted to bring the colors together and lighten the fabric slightly. Overall, I had mixed feelings about it because I lost a little bit of control when painting with inks, especially when painting the shadows, and as a result, the fabric looks a little bit more stained than I wanted. Still, I'll wait until after the wash stage to determine what to do next. Majority of the models, pretty much everyone except Grunts, is wearing those cool dragon scale capes. I wanted to keep their colors as close to the capes of salamanders 
but I didn't have exact color equivalents, so I used the ones I had just to get the general principle. I base coated the capes using a glaze of Vallejo Mother Color Black Red. I applied two coats, hoping to achieve the right balance between color saturation and highlights underneath. After the base coat had dried, I used another glaze of Antares Red and I applied two coats to the scales using either overbrushing or stippling. Third step was to apply a dry brush of basic flesh as a final highlight. I used a makeup brush to gently apply the paint, focusing on lighter areas to accentuate the highlights even more. Another distinctive feature of Scion's getup is that rope braiding thing. Originally, it's black. I want to reduce black elements on clothing to make skin a bit more prominent. Using deep blue seemed like a decent compromise. I applied two coats of a thin glaze to achieve satisfactory saturation. Satisfactory saturation? Mm, I like it. I think I'll make it a thing. Trying to keep the color palette fairly limited, I mixed brown leather and boreal green in equal proportions and painted pants on all the models. At least the ones that were blessed with such a useful garment. To create the first highlight, I added a little bit of Iroko to the mix and painted the raised areas with a thin glaze. To make a final highlight and create a little bit of a texture, I dry brushed pure Iroko with a makeup brush. I wanted to paint two different types of leather to create a little bit of differentiation between them. Dark leather was made using black leather as a base coat. I painted all gloves, boots and satchels. Light leather elements were painted using brown leather. I painted belts, shin guards, leather armor and few other bits and pieces. Next step was highlighting and adding more texture. I used a makeup brush to stipple brown leather on top of black leather then I stippled a one-to-one -one mix of brown leather and Iroko onto all leather elements, both light and dark. And as a final highlight, I stippled pure Iroko on top of light leather. Since I had Iroko on the palette, I base coated straps on weapons and legs. Some models have firebombs among their equipment. Originally, they were painted as if they were made of metal, but I imagined them as clay pots filled with Greek fire. So, I base coated the bombs with a thin glaze of Vallejo model color burnt red and highlighted them with a thin glaze of Parasite Brown. The fuses were painted with a thin down black ink. All blades Masks, studs and rings of fiery death above the leader were base coated using Vallejo metal color steel and dry brushed with Vallejo metal color silver. All brazers and pommels on weapons, as well as various decorations, were painted using a mix of Vallejo metal color copper and gold in equal proportions. In order to get a fairly decent fire effect, I switched back to an airbrush. First, I painted flames with Vallejo Gamer Orange Fire. At this step, I noticed my main mistake of not highlighting them properly. That, paired with the low coverage of the orange paint, was really getting on my nerves. But there wasn't much I could do at that point. Next, I painted the tips of the flame with Vallejo Model Air Red. And the hottest parts of the flames were painted with Vallejo Gamer Gold Yellow. With a little bit of white added to the mix to give the paint a little bit more coverage. Time for the wash step. As usual, I use a selection of oil washes to introduce more detail to various parts of the models. I start with black. I use it on the skin, metal elements, as well as dark leather. Next, I mix some brown and black to shade all the light leather, dragon scales and brazers. Every tunic and tabard is shaded with a dark green and I use a little bit of red wash on flames. 
I left the models overnight and began the next day by removing excess wash with two brushes that were dampened with mineral spirits. First, I used a big brush to reactivate the oil paint, and then a smaller brush to remove most of the paint, leaving it only in the recesses. Few final touches left. The obligatory red eyes, and a little bit of edge highlighting on metallics. And to finish it off, I added some texture to the bases by dipping them in a homemade mix of a grey tile grout, coconut fiber substrate and black aquarium sand to create the look of ash wastes. And we're done. I wish I could tell you how long they took, but I didn't count. Probably 12 to 14 hours or so. Uh, I was hoping to do more edge highlights, but halfway through edge highlighting metallics, I was like, nope, not gonna happen. But still, I am happy with the final result and I hope you like it too. If you do, leave a like and subscribe for the glory of the almighty algorithm. And I'll see you in the next one.